I'm Ash Huggett, and this is the Strong by Ash podcast, where we talk all things fitness and business and lifestyle. All right, thanks for joining me for a new episode, and this episode is a pretty special one. Um, I think this is going to be uh, a really, really good episode, a lot of good discussion. We're going to be talking about social media and business. So I have Zaid from AM Marketing here with us, Affirmative Marketing Group. Thanks for having me. And uh, man, first off, thanks very much for coming on the show. My absolute pleasure, man. It's great to be here. And uh, I'd like to know, so I mean, everyone has a story, so how did you get to... Zaid from AM Group. Yeah, Zaid from AM Group. So you've made me sound important, which is good. That's exactly what I wanted, so thanks for that. Uh, look, Affirmative Marketing Group, which is AM Group, uh, didn't just start out of nowhere. I actually had a – I studied uni. Um, you know, I finished school, went to uni. Didn't really go the way I wanted. I sort of stopped university and went on this journey that took me around the world. And, and, and then I came back to my passion, which is the marketing side of it. You know, I worked in sales. I worked at a chicken shop. I'd done – you know, personal training, everything you can sort of think uh, across a lot of businesses. And I brought a lot of passion, but I, I didn't really find what it was that I wanted to do. Uh, then I stumbled across a business that a lot of the locals might know about, um, that you probably have heard of as well, which is Christian Paul. Mm-hmm. And as I went back to uni, um, to a big finish watch my brand. degree, it's big great, watch brand. Yeah, thank you. Brand. Yeah, yeah. It's a great fashion watch, uh, predominantly female. But anyway, f- good friend of mine, uh, Timothy, who's a local as well. Uh, with a few friends started the business um, and basically put a couple of designs together and was just looking for local help with marketing and I stumbled across this position that I was going to manage you know I was still doing personal training um, and it was just pretty surreal because our first uh, launch you know we actually experimented in a lot of marketing that I'm sure we're going to talk about now Um, influencer marketing particularly social media was massive and um, just stumbled across understanding the algorithm in a way that I think I never did before and didn't learn about in university. Um, had great success in terms of revenue. We made $7 million, you know, first year. Shit. You know, crazy $500,000 Christmas week. And we were literally <laughs> fucking like pinching ourselves, you know. we were So great success with that brand. The team grew very quickly. Um, you know, and I find myself investing in, in opportunity, like businesses like EPM Meals that you know about, Dizzy's Cafe. Uh, and as my team grew, it sort of overgrew Christian Paul. They didn't need that many people in-house. And instead of letting the people go, I thought, why not just get each one of my businesses to contribute now to this marketing team that's amazing. And everyone's local. Like, you don't see businesses like this in Campbelltown. No, you don't. Um, in marketing, in the marketing side of things. Like, we bought this Surrey Hills style, young people just leaving uni, bringing creative ideas. Um, and that's how AIM Group was born. And Really, it's just because I didn't want to let go of anyone, you know. So I offered Christian Paul to take the whole team and just work on sort of a retainer style business. Mm. So there's really been lucky. That's the truth. A lot of good people around me, good staff. But yeah. and here we are today, you know, AIM Group looking after, you know, Facebook Premier Partners, Google Partners, looking after a lot of local businesses. And I like to think, you know, bringing a lot of passion in what we do to a lot of businesses. Yeah, man. So. Actually, that actually leads me to the next question. So, Fervity Marketing Group. So what do you guys do? Okay, so Affirmative Marketing Group, the name actually, uh, believe it or not, the name is, it has a story to it. Um, I was a really good, I wasn't really good at school, but I was a really good uh, public speaker. So I would um, be in the debating team. When it was time to do a speech, I would be very comfortable to get out there and, 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 and talk. Um, always talking in class, a, a good talker. And I was always would do well when I felt like I was on the affirmative team for some reason. Um, and I was actually in the New South Wales debating, you know, when I was in school and I was really proud of that at the time. And the affirmative word really stuck with me and uh, I wanted to use that for the business itself. What's, so it really has no purpose in terms of what services we offer, but obviously on the aspect of marketing, we basically partner with businesses. I hate to say marketing agency. I don't like to use the word agency because I've had the horrible experiences with a lot of agencies out there. Um, marketing partner that has a team of young people that really know what they're doing when it comes to social media. Because um, social media is reasonably new and I feel the young, the young crowd does it better. You know, the people that are just, the people that are on it, the people yeah. that are practicing it. You yeah, know? And, they're growing up with um, it, yeah. Exactly. And so we offer creating content for social. We go into businesses and we act like a department of their own uh, and we look at the social media presence and then we look at what we could be doing on there 
um, to to achieve an objective that they've set out to be. So it's different across most businesses, and in your case, members and uh, or you know even branding or whatever it may be. But we do little things like brochures and graphic design. We my team's grown and we've got more services in house, but predominantly we're social media digital marketing partner, not mm. agency. Yeah, and that's what Angry is. So I guess like I guess then if you're in the scope of the social media and you've seen it change over the last what like five years, it just keeps changing. So like, yeah. you want to talk to me about that, like well, the changes? Perfect example. Like, it's changed since it first came out. You know, since the Bebo days. I don't know if you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a blast. Yeah, man, Bebo, uh, MySpace. Yeah, it's it's definitely changed a lot. <laughs> From my experience in the marketing space, over the last five years, we understand social media a lot better. Like everyone just understands, everyone's more educated. With any sort of form of, any platform or channel that comes out, people end up understanding a little bit better. So I feel that compared, compared to say for 2015 when we launched Christian Paul, for example, and handed out 600 watches to just 600 influencers on, on social media. Pretty people that would say pretty things about the photo, uh, the, the watch, and would put pretty photos of it up. And, and people would be influenced, right? Um, 2020, I don't think it would be as effective. No, I think I people agree, yeah. understand it a lot more. Mm. Uh, they understand it's a form of marketing and probably pick up on what's genuine and not genuine. So it's, I wouldn't say it's less effective. I would say it's uh, more challenging. Not more challenging, even. I would say there's a bigger demand for genuineness on social media. Mm. So it's almost like you can't fake it till you make it anymore on social. Um, so it definitely has changed. I think social media is, you know, like the likes got removed. On Instagram. That's a massive thing for me. I think yeah, it's different on the social for me and the business side of it. Like if we're talking about personal social media, my views are completely different to business. But for the business side of things, I think everyone understands they need to be on there. Uh, but I think... People don't understand, like, there's a lot of attention to detail that customers already know about. And you want to be sort of very advanced with how you portray a message because it only takes one, you know, crappy photo or a lack of a message in a caption or incorrect details that will create a lack of trust between the customer because they know exactly where to look, how to read it and interpret that message. So it's definitely changed because the people that are on it um, have just their their behavior on it is, is completely changing so ma mammoth changes that make huge and to to put that in numbers perspective for you we handed out 600 watches and say for example would sell from that from the amount of reach that we got we were able to create a great amount of influence for people to purchase you know and uh if we were to hand out 600 watches today i think we would have just randomly hand out 600 watches to people that we consider as a big audience, I think we would have probably 10% of the, the effectiveness. Mm. So that gives you like a little bit of an idea on um, how much the behavior has changed on. And as marketers, we, you know, I need to understand that. Yeah, you need to adapt as well. 100%. Yeah. But there's still huge opportunities on there. It's just how to utilize it requires uh, a more genuine approach. Yeah. Something that's more meaningful mm. rather than a numbers approach. Yeah. If you get me. Yeah, and no, I get you. So I guess with... I guess with businesses, I mean, so small businesses, uh, bigger businesses or anyone, you know, with social media posting, you've got the organic versus paid, <laughs> Yeah. you know, and a lot of people are opting obviously for the organic um, reach. And if anyone doesn't know what the organic reach is, it's just that it's not paid. <coughs> That's right. Um, and so it's like free organically. Yeah. What's Post your opinion on both though? Okay. It's a really good question. And, and that's also changed over the last couple of years. The organic is, just so people at home <coughs> have a full understanding, the organic is, you know, when you, you capture a photo, and we're, and we're talking specifically business, right? We're not talking personal. If you capture a photo for your business, for example, a gym, uh, it might be a team photo or um, new equipment or um, a new offer that you have, and you post it and you write a caption on it, and the people that are following you um, will see it, and the people that, look like the people that are following you may come across it through ways like Instagram feeds and whatnot. Um, that's the organic side. You haven't spent any additional money through the Facebook um, advertising platform to boost it. A lot of people are familiar with the word boost. 
But essentially, the way we build ads is not just boosting. Yeah, you can't It's a boost. bit more of a like blind approach. Mm. There's ways to build campaigns that actually nurture an audience and are more relevant. You're basically wasting your money with pressing that boost. Yeah, look, there's ways to do it. There's some times that it makes sense if you just, you know, want to get a bit of reach and you've built your audiences properly. And uh, But a lot of people are wasting their money. That's that's the truth. So I think if is the question, what is more effective or what do well, I just, prefer? Yeah, what do you prefer? I think both go hand in hand. You know, if you've done an amazing sponsored ad tomorrow and it was a video of the whole team and it was mind-blowing and you had an amazing offer on there and it was cheap and people were, could afford it or it was just exciting for everyone that's seen it and we chose a specific audience and your money was spent well and then they decide to follow you or they decide to actually look you up and and then they land on your organic and there's i don't know you eating a pizza at home and it's not, not making a lot of sense and it's getting away from the message they start to sort of lose i think they both complement each other mm. i think definitely now people are if I had to choose which one I'd be on, I think organic. But I think organic is not cheaper. Don't, don't ever, I think people think, oh, you spend money on Facebook on the paid side of it. So organic is cheaper. Let's just look after our organic. Uh, there's so much time invested in building an audience on social organically. Um, and it pays off, but it takes a lot of time. Um, I always opt for an amazing value adding uh, from your socials to a specific audience. Um, you know, if there's a reason to follow you, people will follow you mm. if, if, or will like or will engage or will share or if there isn't a reason, they're not going to. So I think getting your organic right essentially is, is um, in terms of priorities, I would get the organic right first and then I would start thinking about a paid strategy, not just boosting posts, please. Everyone at home, don't just press <laughs> boost and put $50 into Facebook. <laughs> You're basically closing your eyes and just like shooting. Uh, yeah. But I would, I would always focus on organic first because I think getting that right, like get your cover photo right. Have you, have you opened up your Facebook and a desktop and, and seen the story on the side? You know, is your contact number correct on there? Um, have you taken some images that reflect your business? You know, have you thought about what it is that you're going to be putting on there? So I think a little bit of strategy to figure out what you need to do will help you decide what's more important. But get your organic right. And then paid will, will, will yeah. the opportunities on paid will arise. I've actually found uh, it could be quite successful is that posting organically first and then let that get its reach and go well with, you know, with interaction, comments, likes, shares. And then you could actually use that post again to then pay for that yeah. same post. 100%. So like how, how, peop, how your audience engages with an organic post gives you a good indication on how it's probably going to perform with advertising. But also there's some amazing tools that, Advertising offers us to A-B test uh, different kinds of content. So you probably don't have the opportunity to post four different photos and say to people, hey, what do you like more? That's right. Um, where with the advertising, we can build it. We can get your last 10 most engaged photos, put it in the one spend and let Facebook tell us which one actually performs better yeah. by looking at the algorithm and, and how, people are perform uh, how people are reacting to it mm. in different ways. But yeah, I, I think we can't put one more important than the other, but you can't have paid without the organic. Like you need, you need to be present there now. It's like it's the new yellow pages. It's the new directory. You need to be present. You need to be not just present, but show that you care, you know. If you don't care about how your brand looks on social media, then fuck, you don't care about it. The customer's not going to feel like you're going to care about the product or service or them, you know. So yeah. showing that um, detail and love on social really shows that you care about what, what it is that you do. And I think that's why it's really important. Get your organic right and, and find out what the message is and, and be consistent with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and then people, people will, traction will come. And I think as a business, then you can decide if, if um, paid is, is an opportunity. Paid is always an opportunity. You know, if you're working with the right people on how to target people uh, and you invest in the content that you need, then, then paid will definitely work for your business as long as the business mm. is offering a great product. You, you actually, you mentioned something about like, you know, it's like the new yellow pages, but also what's new yellow pages, like email lists, you know, like this is something actually that I was a culprit of. You probably cringe when you hear is that I've only just started now with my website I'm trying to collate emails with an yep. email list. Yep. Um, and like, I understand that it's so important, but I've never done this before previously, yeah. you know, like 
you want to talk about how important it is to get an email list? Email list, so like for people at home, it's, it's um, if someone makes a purchase or if you offer someone something to collect their emails and everyone could probably go to their email inbox now and find 500 emails from companies that you've purchased from before or interacted with, right? And email is by far, if used properly, the most opportunity sits in that email. Because for me, the way I think about email is people have, you can send them a message. People have engaged with you, right? You don't just, you can't just steal someone's email. They purchased from you before or they signed up to a list for a specific reason. So they're already open to your messages, right? And then you have an opportunity to send them something that they can read at their convenience. And building email lists is one thing and then, you know, and the strategy behind that. Um, but sending an email is a whole, you know, that's two different people in my business. You know, the growth of an email list compared to a, um, the actual emails that go out and the messages. But we all know that when you get an email that's not relevant or yeah, you don't it feels it. like spam or it sort of, it sort of pisses you off a little bit. Mm. Like there's so many, I get so many emails a day, man. Like I, I put my phone on airplane mode now. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to do this podcast. I get so many emails a day that I have to quickly go through all the rubbish and, and get rid of it. But every now and then an email that's done properly catches my attention and is very relevant. You know, I might've downloaded a social media calendar template. You know, obviously I'm looking for information about social media. So then I'll make get an email saying, how did the template work for you? Did you know we have these other three templates? Oh, these three templates are relevant to me. So I download them as well. And then in two weeks later, hey, did you know we have an updated version of this? And this company just keeps giving me and giving me and giving me. So when they email me and say, listen, do you know that we have a service and it's $9 a month and basically we send you at least 40 templates. We give you access to all these templates. Suddenly I'm an engaged person that wants to ask that question. So the importance of email for me is, is, is paramount. Like for a business, um, whether it's in store or, or on just online or I think both can work really well and and we've had a lot of success with it. Like we work with shopping centers. Some shopping centers we've taken up when even like contacting their customers through email. And we've just started to have a lot of success. Got rid of newspaper advertising, that was a waste of money. We're able to let thousands of people know about things that are changing in COVID. We're able to add value. But then one of the retailers has a sale, which I believe is adding value too, letting our customers know obviously the relevant people. And sending him a message out, Christian Paul would have not had the success if we didn't use the emails. So once we sent out those 600 watches, we got a lot of sales from it. And that was probably a spike. But then things would start slowing down again. But because all those sales, we were able to collect it. There's another strategy. I'm not sure how you know, people would feel about how this works. But this is what's happening every day. Is once you put your email into a business's database, they can now use that email to target you through other social networks so now that you've signed up you you know everyone says that oh i think they're listening to me on my phone you know and that is happening but they're looking also at your behavior and what you're signing up to and then you may get a message after so it is an opportunity for business as long as it's used ethically and then other opportunities to have someone's email for example we don't physically look alike or some may disagree but on email me and you may have some on on online we may have some look-alike behaviors and that's mm. the word and we can use emails to create a lookalike audience. So say, for example, I signed up to this social media calendar um, template that I received in my email. Now they use my email for Facebook advertising, but they ask Facebook to find people that look like me. Then you may stumble across it because you know what? Me and you have been interacting with a lot of similar things. We interact together. So email, we collect everyone's email. If you have five people's email, that's 500% better than not having anyone's email. And then sending them an email, whether it's through a professional email channel like MailChimp or, you know, you can start small. And things like MailChimp are completely free. Um, you can use it up to 2,000 subscribers. And if you have 2,000 good subscribers, you can make a lot of money with, you know, whatever business you're in. So email for me is absolute paramount. I think as the business starts day one, you should collect emails strategically, not just having a massive email list. We've had people that have 30,000 emails. God knows how they got them. You know, they may have done a promotion that's not even relevant to them. Like, oh, we're going to give $100 away to everyone who signs up. And everyone's going to sign up, but no one cares about your product. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So 
Yeah, email is definitely important. And I recommend starting day one, collecting customers' email and relevant people's emails addresses. What about, um, I guess, with branding, <laughs> like storytelling? Like, I know that's obviously really important, but how's, how important is storytelling and like branding for a business? Well, branding essentially, and <laughs> branding is your point of difference. Like, it's, re- it's, your, it's your identity, right? So your identity needs to be unique, a little, you know, so people can identify your business. The story behind a business really adds depth to that, you know. And in a in a modern day of life, you could look outside your window and say, "Gosh, if we count the amount of signs, everyone's got it." You know, there's so many businesses out there. Having that story element to it creates a huge um, impact on the customer. Would it be like a connection, a connection, with a someone? relationship? Mm. You know, really a relationship. A customer will remember a meaningful story about a business more than they're going to remember the price and the expiry date and the, you know, the little mechanicals of the business. And it creates a gateway to keep communicating with the customer. But it's important to be genuine as well. Because if you build a brand like that's based on a bullshit story, it's people will sort of uncover that. Yeah, they a see bullshit that. story can only go so far. Mm. You know, I like to use Christian Paul as an example because it's one of the most interesting businesses I've worked with. Christian Paul was a name of, Timothy, who started the business, Christian Paul was his actual son. So he named the business after his son. And the logo started, like the logo was a C and it starts at 11 and finishes at 25 on the watch face because that's the birth of his son. So that gave him, you know, so much, people gave him so much time because the story had meaning. Mm. His story was after his son, you know, like, uh, suddenly we were having conversations that were really strong. Like that's how we got into Maya, into Iconic, you know, online, everyone knew the story and just had meaning and purpose. And I think when it comes to having a story, you need to have a story now to be different. Otherwise just call yourself plumber, you know, or call yourself mechanic. <laughs> There's no point having a brand really. If you don't have a unique story on how the business started, same as mine, you know, it might not be as deep and meaningful, but it's true. Mm. And it's why my name exists. and. Uh, even the journey of my logo has changed. You know, we started orange and we tra- and everything has a, has a meaning and, and we document it so we can tell people that story as yeah. as I can. I, I track it and educate people about it because then once I tell them that, they know about my business and they're invested in it mentally. Right? Yeah. So definitely have a story for your business. Don't just start a business to make money because it's not going to come for a long time. That's right. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's so much work involved and you are going to have to... But have a story because I think the customers are so educated and are exposed to so many, a sea of messages by the second that if you don't have a genuine story, you will never be remembered. And you may make a sale now or have some success quickly, but you won't actually build relationships with customers. And that yeah. should be the ultimate goal. I think that uh, it, like even with Squawk Club, like we did so well from the very beginning, from opening, like we had a story to tell. Like I... I was essentially a personal trainer in a garage and then yeah. I opened up into something like this. But I also, I also YouTube this, this whole journey. So I, I took everyone on a story, yeah. on a journey with me. You know, we had- and They feel involved. They, that's right. And like we had, I had so many views. I remember looking at those stats thinking, I can't believe this. I can't believe how wow. many views we're getting. And everyone knew who Squawk Club was. You could see from the, the, the Google researchers as well. Like you can see exactly where, like we were originally going to be in Gregory Hills. Then- yeah. You know, we ended up pulling the pin of that one and everyone kind of followed that journey. Yeah. And we came into here and Sven Grange and, yeah. you know, we're building the gym. I was recording that. Doing so did Instagram you actually likes. document the whole journey of building the gym? Yeah. Man, to- like we, we, I went through a whole um, the video series as well of like interviewing the, the coaches. I went through and I, I recorded that. I had a whole, um, it was like, I guess a, a vlog recording um, you, like what I, what I actually wanted in a coach. Yeah. Then I set it up. So then it obviously wasn't recording, you know, the, the actual interviews, but I had that as an overview so people could see that. And then um, when I, uh, when I, I offered the, the coaches the positions, yeah. I also recorded that on a video so then yeah. they could actually see that as well. Yeah. So I let everyone come on a journey and on a story. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I put that down, like with Squat Club did so well from the very beginning. <laughs> Squawk Club did so well in the beginning just because they knew um, they journey with us, you know, they, they know the story and everyone in, in part of Squawk Club knows that, you know, I am the face of the brand, but it's also like this where I've kind of come from. It's amazing how for a business owner, really that journey is, is, is a passion. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a passionate journey that you went through that's so genuine. 
for a marketer like me, that would be a strategy. You know, it's like I look at that and go, wow, the, you know, there is an element of story and an element of brand. But once you pull back all that, you know, bullshit that comes from marketing, it's just a genuine story that you have. That's and right. that's why you've had the success. And like, you know, you know, me even walking into your gym and I've heard about it you know, a lot and walking in, it's, it's grown so much and you're killing it, man. Thanks, it's, a story. it's honestly, it's, it's like, like you said, like you got to be genuine. You got to be passionate about what you want to do and have like a, a soul, I guess, like a purpose. Yeah. You know, and, Absolutely. and if you, if you don't have that, people see right through that bullshit. Prime example is your business. Yeah. Is what we're talking about. Have a story and not for the sake of having a story, but the journey that it takes you on, you know, actually have a bit of purpose and meaning to it. And people will be more open to receiving your message or your product or your service or your information or whatever. It might be. So, yeah. My but definitely in terms of branding and uh, in terms of storytelling, prime example is yourself. Experience that we've had with Christian Paul, very similar. So I guess like in terms of then, like, you know, back towards the marketing aspect of things, like when it comes to people, you know, posting on social media, they obviously need like you know a few things they need to nail. You know, good imagery. They yeah. got to have like good copy, and then also if they're going to be doing you know paid advertising, the, the targeting has to be spot on. Yeah. You know. What, what, do you, what do you think about like those three and how can you break those down? I think all this stuff that we're talking about takes time. And a lot of business owners know that to do it really, per- like how many people have you, have you heard say this? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm doing my, but I don't have time, but I don't have time. Because it takes time. You can't run the business and think about the marketing. And sometimes, to be honest with you, the, let's not use the word, not the negative things in a business, but the, the draining or the mentally challenging things in a business should probably limit your ability to be as creative as you possibly can be if you are only working on the marketing. For example, if you had to run a class, set up the renovations, pay the bills, run to the post office, sort out an issue with a staff member, hire new staff, and then you go, oh, shit, I've got to do a post, you know, and, and suddenly you've deteriorated your level of creativity, you know, and, and a lot of people are investing in social but probably not not able to put 110 percent in it and what's acceptable it depends on the business and how much it's relying on social you know there's businesses honestly that are doing well without social so it's it's sort of not rushing i think social is the biggest thing and i think having good quality doesn't just mean working externally but it's investing whether it's time whether it's money you need to make that decision and if you are investing externally Look for someone who is going to be considered a partner, not an agency, and understand your business. Set foot in your business. Like, how is someone going to do a good post for for your business if they've never set foot here? That's right, man. Or if they haven't met, you know, the three puppies running around the office. Mm. (laughs) You know what I mean? So, uh, to make it genuine and meaningful, they need to achieve the level of knowledge of your business, uh, which you have. But they need to have time and be positive and creative and not be dealing with the shit that we go through on a daily basis you know for the business um so look my advice is it depends what platforms you're on and what you're using and and i guess it just really depends on what channels you're using before i can give advice on that but definitely don't rush into posts like people have these ideas about how much i should be posting and how active i should be and um but really it's quality over quantity for me every time Mm. so quality is definitely important um, deciding what to post doesn't need to be too complicated. It just needs to have meaning. You know, and it doesn't, I actually don't think that we're getting into a day and age now that every photo needs to be perfect or every caption needs to be perfect. I actually think that it's probably starting to go a little bit, I think every post needs to be genuine to be successful. You know, like to give you an example, um, we mentioned the cafe, Dizzy's Cafe, big shout out to the team at Dizzy's. Um, I, Great you know, coffee, by the thank way. Thank you. Thank you. Just down the road. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have a girl there. Her name's Yasmin. You guys would, be, would know Yasmin. You, you guys are there all the time. She's been there now for three years, four years. Honestly, heart of gold, right? Works there for the last four years, day in, day out, putting hard work in. Every one of our um, customers loves Yasmin. Never had a complaint about Yasmin. Always on time. No issues, right? She's now le- like she's leaving. She's progressing in her life, and we support her. Um, she wants to become a teacher. We post ev- every day on Disney's. We post food, which wh- is why most people you think would follow us, right? They want Avo Smash. They want 
um, pancakes they want. But the most engaging post was a message that I'd put up. You know, I'd stopped the schedule that we have and I took a photo of myself and her and I posted on there and I said, just a big message to Yasmin. We wish you all the best. Um, and it was just a message from my, you know, my heart really to her to wish her the best in, in the future. And that's the most engaging post by tenfold, by tenfold, like 10 times. So Instagram has a weird way, not just Instagram, social media has a weird way of understanding when people are receiving a message genuinely compared to not, mm. if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, for me, that's a great example of, of um, the kind of content people should be doing on the business. So Yeah, no, it's all about gen genuine, like being so genuine. And when we post as well here, the posts that, you know, are very personal about people, about people's certain results or anyone specific that's, you know, part of the squat club team, they, they, they are the posts that do so well, you know, yeah. like we've put up, I've put up ones as well, like personal messages, you know, through there. Yeah. And they do so well as opposed to other things. Well, I mean, look, they are always genuine, but the ones that actually have a purpose and has a bit of a story behind it, yeah. you know, and people can uh, relate to, yeah. they're things the that ones actually that do happen, really well. Right? Yeah. Things that are actually happening. Exactly. It involves people that are actually there with things that are actually happening that are true and genuine. I think that makes a huge difference. Definitely, definitely. So I guess, when again, you know, going back to the social media in this day and age of 2020, so people are scrolling really, really fast. You know, like Instagram, it's getting faster and faster. So yeah. is it right? It's a lot of messages. Yeah, definitely. And like, you know, <laughs> the scrolling through, looking for that, you know, the captivative image. Is it true that once you stop onto an image for a split second and kind of want to look at the image and you might click on the actual content of the, of the copy, does, does the platform understand that? So then they'll show you more of that, you know, that page? Yeah, absolutely. So the algorithm... Instagram doesn't actually have a document you can just download that tells you what affects the algorithm. Marketers are out there studying what seems to be having an effect based on the results they're getting. And they are, recomm they are making recommendations to other marketers about what they believe is impacting. So the Instagram algorithm really is what you're referring to here, right? And without complicating things is the more people react to something in any way, like share, time spent, zooming in. Uh, we marketers believe that it impacts the amount of reach that Instagram or social, any social platform really, all of algorithms differ a little bit, you know, across Google, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, but Instagram will, let's use the word push your thing onto more people because it's seeing a, good results so not because they are trying to take advantage of it or solely for the fact because they're trying to serve you and me as social media users so for example people like myself have engaged with something for a long period of time it's recognizing that this photo is more engaging with people like myself and then for that reason it should somehow rank in the feed for someone like yourself if they recognize that we're similar or fit a specific audience so um, definitely those things like sh how much, like for a business sake, I, I hate talking about engagement and likes and stuff when it comes to personal. I, I actually think that for the personal side of social media, I hope that every platform takes more steps in the direction of getting away from that, like likes, um, comments. I want them to move away from it. Um, and I want people to just be looking at each other's lives as a collage in a way that is not putting peer pressure on people. But let's talk businesses only. Um, the amount of engagement you get, whether it's uh, shares, likes, reactions, um, time spent, um, whatever it may be, it will affect your ranking in terms of how much Instagram thinks it is uh, viral, you mm. know, establishing some sort of virality in the, in, in, to some degree. Right? What's, more, what's more important? What's more important for the users? Well, what's more important in terms of likes, shares, comments, bookmarks? Yeah. What, what do you think? There's no specific law, in my opinion, on what's more important. It really depends on, I think, a, a, a variety, like a, it's almost like a mix of all of them together. Um, you, you need to be engaged across more. You can't just have comments and no one liked it. You know, I think Instagram will recognize that that's a bit of an issue. Yeah. I think holistically, they're all important. 
all very important. Um, how much people liked it. So I think it's important for businesses to prompt people, you know, give them a call to action. Can you like our post um, if you want this or like for this, love for this or have a poll that asks them to comment. But it needs to be meaningful. Right? Mm. Don't just say, hey, That's right. you know, or tag, you know, we um, tag to wins, you know, work sometimes. There might be a small um, outburst of activity, but uh, generally speaking, you want to have an approach that holistically tries to get more engagement across all of the things that we're talking about that, that we believe um, that are part of the algorithm that affects mm. your ultimate results and audience and whatever it is that you might be trying to achieve. What about um, consistency? So how frequent should people be posting? Yeah. Uh, is it multiple times a day? Is it once a day? Is it every day as well? Like, what do you think? What's the frequency? I definitely think um, once you have your quality in order, meaning that you know what you want to post, you know what your audience wants, you know what's actually engaging your audiences, you know what's assisting in your overall objectives, then my recommendation is the more the better. But it shouldn't go the other way oh, we need 10 posts a day, what can we scramble together? Mm. I'd say don't post at all if that's the, if the way of thinking. Um, but I definitely think quantity is, is good. If you're adding value, right, this makes sense. If you're adding value, then the more value you add, the better. But there's a certain degree where people are spamming. You know, was that post of added value? No, people aren't starting to recognize that. They're unfollowing you. They're, they're stopping to listen to your business message for whatever reason. So I think there are, there are people out there that are offering a good amount of value. I can't really give you a number because it does jump from business to business, right? How many, um, how many posts should they be doing compared to how many posts they should be doing? You know, it's, it's, yeah. it all comes down to the kind of business it is in the industry. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's, let's go back. Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's go to um, segment into Instagram itself. Now, we, we kind of said before how, I guess, like before it was, a, it was very important, or I guess for some degree, like the power of what the image looked like. And then now we're kind of talking about, you know, the, the value that it's promoting, that that, that post is. Like, I know that, you know, with, with my post um, specifically, you know, I, uh, I, was, I was an ad, ad, advocate for, you know, having a, a good image, making sure it looks great on the feed. Um, but then I know I've now changed my mindset to then think, okay, well, what's true to me? Yes. What am I trying to deliver <coughs> to, um, the audience? So mm -hmm. now I'm giving like more so about utility marketing. Yes. Right. So I'm giving a lot of value and I don't mind, I don't care about how it's going to look on the page anymore. Yeah. So do you want to break down, I guess, for businesses, how yeah. should people be posting on Instagram? I agree with you. I think that's the shift. I think that we should be less concerned with, um, with overall look, yeah. especially when it comes to like, your industry is very different. I think it's very specific as well that people are starting to want that a little bit more. Mm. They don't want just perfect images. You know, they want to hear about the day that you didn't diet or, you know, the, when you were off season or you weren't looking your best and how did you get back to that? I think that is more socially acceptable now. <clears throat> In saying that though, it, it can, it's different. Like imagine you're a graphic designer. Your feed should look pretty good, right? You want probably to show your skill across your social media feed. So I think it depends on when it involves like ethical things. I think people should become less conscious of how everything looks right and more focused on what each message is. For example, like maybe I didn't look the best when I posted a photo of me and Yasmin for the cafe wishing her goodbye. But that's what people wanted to see. People aren't looking right, following me. For, yeah, it's real. Um, and Yas maybe wanted to do another angle or a different lighting, <laughs> you know, but. I think these things don't. Don't lie, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I think these things shouldn't exist when it comes to businesses. You know, it really it shouldn't exist when it comes to personal either. But there are some businesses that the style of your feed may impact your customer's decision making process, whether and, and may have an impact on how much level of care they think that you have as a business. And I'm not saying that, like for example. I don't know. I expect to land on Audi, right? Audi, not the mm. not Aldi, Audi, the car, right? And see a good feed. That's probably thought about a little bit. Like I want to, I want to like the cars, and I wouldn't expect to see a crappy photo. That's right. It still comes kind of comes down to branding. That's right. Like people still want that from mm. Instagram. Like 
But I think it is more socially acceptable in your kind of industry and other other things that may be similar to to let go of that pressure that everything needs to look perfect and match. And it doesn't. As a business, people are looking for value and um, yeah, I think that's what we should be focused on. Yeah. Now, what about uh, Facebook? You know, we we know that people are spending a longer time on Facebook or looking for, I guess, longer pieces of content as opposed to on Instagram. Mm. Like how should people be posting on Facebook? Look, there's a lot of studies to say that longer videos are, are engaging more and, and obviously that's going to happen because a longer video has more of a message to tell and people are going to spend more time on there. And, um, but it's not always the instance, right? If you put a full wasted video up, if I put a video that's just black and has nothing happens, um, it's not going to be liked by our customers or by our audience. Um, I think video is definitely the way to go, there's, but there's actually no, there's no reason to suggest that in the algorithm, you will get higher ranking on the feed, whether it's Instagram or Facebook, right? As a video in comparison to a photo. But there is reason to suggest that video engages more with the customer. And for that reason, they have studies have shown that video is um, ranking higher or, you know, getting more traction. So I would say there's a time for photos and time for videos. I think across Facebook, if a, if a photo tells, you know, says a thousand words or whatever the saying is, then a video says two billion words, you know. I think videos, but videos can be an investment as well. Mm. You know, videographers aren't cheap and people want to get a perfect video every time. Maybe we should um, ask your videographer who's here now. Yeah, yeah he's <laughs> making a racket and he's making a mess over there, but he's gone. I don't know. I think he's on break. See what I mean? They just can't rely on <laughs> No, big shout out to Izzy. He's a great videographer. And, uh, it's making these guys accessible. And I think it's that's a big shift at the moment. A lot of people are picking up a camera and doing videos for businesses like you and I. And it's a lot cheaper and more accessible. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you can't pick up your iPhone and, and do a great video. You know, like... There are some things that I see that I think this could have been avoided. You know, you could have just a bit more of an advanced phone or, you know, some utensils to make it a little bit more inviting, mm. you know. But, um, yeah, I think there's no real proof to say video will make your business better. I think you still need to think about what it is in the video. Uh, you still need to have meaning. And obviously a video is a longer opportunity for you to engage with a customer and have a longer message. You know, like this video now that we're saying will no doubt engage more with relevant people. That's, that's the biggest thing as well. Like, I'm not looking for more engagement. I'm looking for more engagement with relevant people that we actually want to get this message. They will walk away knowing everything about me and you now. Yep. Where if we just done a photo, you know, um, here doing a podcast, they would have just known that we had a podcast. That's right. So the message is completely different. Yeah. So okay, because okay, that kind of goes into even followers. You know, like people can have fifteen, twenty thousand, fifty thousand followers, yeah. but you know, a lot of them may not even be relevant to what the person Man, is. We've handed out. Businesses. We we've we've uh, sponsored influencers that have a thousand followers, right? Which nowadays is not a huge amount in this day and age, right? Apparently, um, and we've sponsored people that have a million followers. And I'll be honest with you. I think that there are people out there with a thousand followers that can influence, that are trusted more to influence people um, about a product or service or a business than someone with a million followers. You know, I think all our perceptions changed and we're actually looking for true reasons as to why that exists. You know, not just because Tammy Hembro said these tights are the best tights she's ever worn. So I believe her immediately where maybe that did happen in 2014. People were like, oh, Tammy Hembro looks amazing. It must be those tights. I, I need a pair of them. That's not me speaking. Well. <laughs> speaking on behalf of another. Size eight, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and that goes back to what I was saying about the way we un receive messages has changed. Mm. So numbers, it, it's become a much more complicated game. And, but it comes back to the simplicity of what you're doing and, and just understanding the message. And let the traction happen. You know, like people will like it if you're passionate about it. Um, and, and not really having a code for like, okay, we need to do this many videos and this many photos. And no, you know what? Like, okay, you want to do a video? Can you tell me what kind of video you would be passionate about? Would be the first question. And the second question, okay, that's a great idea. But why do you think your audience would be 
um, would be engaged with a message like that. And then if it makes sense, let's do it. You mm. know, let's pick up a phone and a tripod and, you know, and, and let's film it and let's talk about it. Yeah. All right. What about, um, you know, there's another one that Instagram and Facebook are probably looking over their shoulder, like TikTok. That's obviously climbing higher and yeah. higher. There's more and more users getting on the platform. Yeah. How should people have you started a TikTok? Thing? I have, I have. I actually started in isolation time. That was good fun. <laughs> yeah, I think that fell in the right time for them as yeah, well, right? Definitely, you could definitely find there was going to be a lot more users in isolation. I had an awesome time on there. Yeah. Um, you can definitely spend a lot of time. You can waste a <laughs> fuck load of time on there. Fuck. Man, you end up watching probably a couple of hours of pointless videos. Yeah, like I don't recommend it- going on there if you're like doing something important. Oh, or, no. Or, but make sure you really have some free time because. You will just you look, can spend TikTok so much on for it. me is mm. so interesting. Like, I think it stemmed from Musically, which was a yeah um, sing along or dance along sort of video, and it was a really young demographic. and And the demographic is still generally young, but um, it, it's expanding. TikTok just released their TikTok for business, um, which in I have no doubt in my mind will be the biggest opportunity for businesses. The moment something new comes out, it's a opportunity for marketers like us to send out messages uh, as long as they're you know good and, and um, they, they reflect a good business and it's not really received like i watched a 7-eleven tiktok the other day 7-eleven right you're familiar mm. with mm. the petrol station it was on tiktok and it was an ad it was a 100 percent ad and the guy threw a donut up to him or something something to do with food that they had at the um, on site and you know, you can have up to 60 seconds on there. And I received the message and I n- in no way at any point felt like I didn't want to watch it because it was through a feed of videos that I was actually reacting to and, and it knows that I like based on the algorithm, the evil algorithm. Um, but I, I do question as to what service it really brings, you know, the community. I think it's a good laugh. I think it's had a good effect on that. You don't need to look picture perfect in every photo and every video. Mm. And I'm seeing more people are sharing stuff on themselves, just natural Mm. and feeling more confident. I think for, you know, self-confidence, TikTok has been okay. Um, But I I, I do think it's a massive opportunity for businesses. But I also think like a law firm may not want to be on TikTok, you know, or a small serious business, you know, or, or do they? I don't know. There might be a creative way they want to use it. But I think it's definitely no doubt in my mind the biggest opportunity now to get your message across, um, reach as many people, like reach way more people than you would across Instagram and, and Facebook and probably influence more people. Mm. And even TikTok influencers now, like asking people to use a lot of songs that we have never heard of, never ever heard of the artists. We wouldn't have known of because of TikTok, they were catchy. So now people are like, songs are going to number one because they're yeah. big on TikTok. Yeah. I so, it, so even if there's a creative way to deliver your like if you had the squat um, challenge and it had a unique music to it and then everyone started doing it in your downstairs, but then it became a, a thing that everyone else was doing, you know, and it sort of referred them back to your page. Mm. Um, there's still an algorithm and it still needs to be understood in a little bit more detail, but it, it falls back to the same thing. Engagement, people liking things, hashtags. And now with TikTok for business, I would recommend just going in there and getting the handle that you want for your business linking up your credit card and trolling it out. Saying, you know what, I want to spend 50 bucks advertising my drone. No, there's a business. There's a business yeah, there's a drone across. over there. There's a drone business yeah. across the road. Yeah. So <laughs> advertising drones and mm. see what happens. You know, it's really interesting to watch a very raw video that you know is going to be short and has a point to it. Um, and I think the customer psychology behind it is not fully understood yet, but I find myself watching an hour of videos that I, at the end of it, say, I don't think this has served me any purpose. <laughs> so I think that's a, it's, it's, almost, it's an opportunity for marketers, but I'm also interested to see where it goes socially. Know. Did you see my hack, my hack story last night? I put an Instagram story. No, tell me. So with the, um, you've got the almond milk. Yeah. You know, so oh, like yeah. in the carton. <laughs> I actually did say that. Yeah. I've had that many responses back. <laughs> yeah. People going, I can't believe this. Yeah. This is like a brain explosion. Yeah, exactly. Whereas you, you, for anyone who hasn't watched that, is that you got the, the carton and then the, the I guess what the, the hole, or yeah. the, the nozzle was on one side of the carton. Yeah. And you usually pour with like with the closest yeah. end down, but flipping it the other way actually stops Doesn't it from make overflowing. It the, the clunky. Yeah. yeah. You don't I, spill. I, I think you know I'm actually a big fan of DIY. Like like. Um, 
I don't know, it's visually pleasing to see things like that. Yeah. Like it just it's a solution for something. But yeah. I find myself watching like I watched a four and a half minute video of cam someone doing the painting on a canvas art, you know, when they yeah. roll the um they roll the bucket. So they basically hang a bucket from the roof and they fill it with different colours of paint or something and then they just let it oh, dangle yes. over the canvas. Have you seen that? Yeah, they're wicked. Yeah, so they're really cool. And I just watched the whole video, but by the end of it, I said, like, what did I expect to, expect to happen? <laughs> you know, like, like, what happened by the end of it? That was different. Um, so it's interesting. We're, we're, they, we've got interesting times ahead of us. What about, um, what about timing? So, you know, you kind of mentioned about the algorithm and, you know, people are still looking at timings. Like, is that still important? Like timing of the post on all platforms? It is. It is. On, a, on, on the business side of things, um, you can't, like, I wouldn't post at 3 a.m. to my audience if I'm a cafe. Do you know, I want to try, hit the, I always do think about what times work for us. And rather than using a level of assumption, you know, I think it's a matter of posting across different times. You know, do an afternoon one, do a night one, um, and, and, and even take into account what content pillar they're under. Because if you do a post of something that's very engaging, no matter what time you post it, but then you do something that's not very engaging, you can't really go side by side and compare. Mm. So I think data is key, right? So um, I use a level of common sense. So it's like, okay, I want to target people for lunch. So let's, let's hit them at, you know, just after breakfast or let's, how long does it take someone to drive to my cafe? You know, half an hour, 45 minutes. Okay, well, let's target them an hour before. When is someone making a decision about lunch? The day before maybe, you know, the night before. So I think it comes to testing and trialing, um, setting a few, um, you know, once you start collecting content in within a same pillar. So for example, if you have a content pillar in your gym, which say team, right? And you know that it always engages really well. And you, um, in the last photo shoot you guys done, you have like six images of team. And over the next month, you're going to post these pretty much erratically, right? And then you look back at the six posts and you say, okay, which one performed better and why do I think it performed better? Um, there's so many people overthinking what time they should post. I almost think it's not irrelevant. I think apply a level of common sense and look at the data and make a decision. But I don't think it's as big of a deal as people are making it out. Mm. Like, it's, there's no secret time anymore right there's uh, they might have existed in the original algorithm but there's no secret time now that you can trick the algorithm to getting engagement and it really shouldn't be about that it should be about does your customer want to hear this from you right now do you know it's, it's late at night do they want to see you pumping out weights and yelling probably not you mm. know maybe send them something more like an almond milk message would be more around, <laughs> you know, making a coffee or something. give them my instagram story <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah. What about, uh, all right, let's get into the nitty gritty here. So like social media do's and don'ts. Let's start with social media don'ts. Um, don'ts. Um, I think don't just post anything for the sake of posting. Um, I think understand the specs, like don't post in wrong sizes. Do not, as a business, I feel don't share just an Instagram post to Facebook. We've all done it. We all, you know, probably will do it, but probably to avoid that because the hashtags and stuff may cross over and, and the way that you tag businesses in and, and Facebook actually recognizes that as well. Um, I think think about each channel differently. Um, so don't treat every channel the same. That would be the don't. Um, the do's, I think don't rush. Like collect some images, you know, go in there, take some photos. Um, don't have like a purpose yet. Just go in there, take some photos of what really you're passionate about. Think, talk with the team because sometimes if you do have staff or someone that's to help you build the business or other team members, I think you should take the time to understand what everyone else thinks they should be getting content on. Collect content and plan it out. You know, there's no harm of just getting a spreadsheet and Google Sheets um, and plan it out, I think. And then look back at the month. You know, who can genuinely hand on heart say, I looked at the last month of posting that I've done and I realized that nine of the 10 images I posted didn't really get any interaction. Mm. And why? Think about why. Do you know what I mean? So I, I think the b biggest do's and don'ts is take a little bit of time and care and don't just rush to post. Understand the sizes, you know, and, and always think mobile first. Mobile first. People aren't logging onto Instagram on their desktop. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think also don't... Don't just say stuff for the sake of it. I think 
it pisses people off if they there's a paragraph that they just read and it has no what is the message that you're trying to achieve? Don't overthink it. Be genuine about it. Um, and and consistency is key. Like people, they do want to see more from you if you're doing the right things. So, um, yeah, I hope, I hope that was a good Yeah, yeah, that helps. Definitely. I, I definitely, there's like, if you also like big advice for a lot of people out there doing their own socials at home, Google social media um, specs. So like the sizes of each. Actually, you know what? I'm going to give free tricks to everyone. Canva. You know, Canva is now one of the biggest businesses and I recommend people to use it. It lets you edit things. And it's not about just looking good. It's about conveying a message. So if you need to write the word sale on your business, maybe don't do it on Snapchat and screenshot it and then crop it and send it. Like without naming your names, there are some businesses that screenshot a photo that's in their inbox, cut out the, like, people understand it so well now. Yeah that pay a little bit of attention to detail, do a little bit of research, no matter how small your business is or how big it is. It's not about portraying how huge you are. It's about understanding that people do understand the social space and just spend a little bit of time getting on everyone's level because as a business owner, you're probably not, you know, you probably spent your time building a great business. But you may not be on social as much as a lot of people out there, right? Yeah. So take the time to understand it. Um, Google. Google specs and get on Canva. It's yeah, man, I, I second that. That's that's where I post. Yeah. I do. I start off a lot of my posts from Canva. Yeah, and then I will make sure that the specs are correct for each platform. Yeah, to be able to post up because you've also got to make sure that that you know their phone that's in their hand and they're scrolling. They need to make sure that something that's going to captivate them very begin yeah. from the, um from that start. Yeah, but it's, it's got to flow. You know, so if it's not going to flow with them. Like, you know, even an Instagram story, if that's, you know, gone sideways, people yeah. aren't going to want to look at that. Exactly. You need to make sure uh, it's a Blurry photos. Correct. Yeah. Fuck, I hate blurry photos. Mm. So much. I don't know if it's because I'm in the marketing game or if everyone agrees with me, but when you come across a blurry photo, you just think like, this is too blurry to post. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, especially when it comes to businesses, you know, products and services. Um, you want to show a little bit of attention to detail because... Uh, there's no business out there that I don't want to have a uh, perception that they have attention to detail, if that makes sense. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it portrays that. It, it lets people know that. So don't post blurry photos. Yeah. That's it. Don't do that, please. Um, but yeah, experiment as well. Like we don't want people to, because times are changing. You know, what do's and don'ts are now may be different to a month or two or, or a yeah, year. That's right. I mean, if you're listening to this podcast like a year later, you know, it may have changed. Exactly. Mm. I'm going to throw um, one of the last questions as a bit of a curveball for you. Oh, if, no. uh, <laughs> if you could go back and start again, but you couldn't choose the pathway of where you are right now, what would you be doing? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Mm. You didn't know about this one. No, <laughs> this is a surprise one. Look, I love um, being in the marketing space. I really do. But I, I can't help. But <laughs> this is a very interesting question. <laughs> Maybe I'll be a videographer. They, those guys make a lot of <laughs> no, Apparently. Apparently on a long break as well. You know what? I've always loved music. And I wouldn't, I actually play guitar, you know, in my spare time. I never took that path to, to make it um, something that I do on a, but I would have liked to be music artist, you know, to see life completely different. Mm. Um, very different to what I'm doing now, but. Yeah, I enjoy music. I would have liked to be a music artist and maybe a bit more carefree than a business owner, right? Yeah. Maybe like, I don't know, not wear shoes to, the, to a meeting like this or live in Byron Bay and, and chill out. You know? yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I would have liked to have maybe seen where that takes me yeah. if I didn't have the marketing business and the responsibilities of uh, 20 staff members that I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that would be news to everyone. So uh, I guess for, for people like, um, where can they find you? And also for businesses, like wh what can you let them know? Like if they approach you, what can they expect? Yeah. So obviously now we've talked about the things that we do at Affirmative Marketing Group. The most important thing is like, we're not looking to work with a certain number of people, but if there are opportunities that you think that you can improve your social media by having someone manage it with experience across many industries, it's a matter of Googling us or look us up on Facebook, you know, AM Group or on um, uh, Instagram, um, your marketing partner. Just hit us up with a DM. Um, our numbers are there as well. You can give us a call or, or reach out on our website. There's so many ways you can contact us these days. And hopefully we can, 
we'll, we'll talk about how we can assist you. Um, the most important way is to find out if we can, and only then will we put a solution together for the business, you know. And it may be just added help. You know, someone like yourself may just need one more person to assist with posting. And, and usually business owners know the direction they want to be heading in, but don't have the time or experience to do it. So we can be that time and, and experience. Mm. Um, but we need to understand the passion it is about the business. And yeah, we look, like we, what we've done in the local area is great. Like we work with a lot of local businesses. Um, and if you haven't heard of us, there's no harm in reaching out and seeing what we can do for you. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Awesome, man. So thanks so much for jumping no, pleasure on. To, um, pleasure to be on here and I'm grateful that you had me on here. No worries. And if you guys like this podcast, then please make sure to like and subscribe. Or I don't think you can like the podcast, but anyway, this is also going on YouTube <laughs> as well. So We need to get you the media spec sheet. Give it, well. <laughs> yeah, I think I might need that. But, um, you know, and if it, if it actually you think it's going to help someone as well, then, you know, reach out and share, share that out to someone else too. So you never know who it can impact. Um, but that's it for today. So thanks so much thanks for joining us, Aid. Thanks very and, much. And uh, thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.